hope that you can deeply appreciate the format that we're, we offer tonight. Uh, we like to give people the opportunity to share and to express and to reveal and to open themselves up to you. So I really thank you for your patience and understanding. Uh, we now have, uh, uh, we also want to thank uh, all of our interviewers and our, uh, uh, the, well, the dear folks who sat in the seats. And now we have another uh, opportunity to hear from the school board. Uh, we want to apologize publicly that tonight there is a school board meeting. And many of our school board members were kind of torn between being there and being here. So we, I take the blame for that because the scheduling was on mine. And I just say, uh, I just need to receive grace. Amen? Amen. Say grace, grace, grace. 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 Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. So we, we do have some young man who's here. And this is Mr. Ronald Bailey. And Mr. Bailey is here, and he'll be coming up. And he will be uh, uh, interviewed by uh, our own Reverend Dr. Bishop William Green. Amen. And he will uh, uh, be a part of this. You need him? Can you make it okay? <laughs> another, another servant. Amen. Let's give them another applause. We thank everyone so much. Thank you. Congratulations on your candidacy. Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to uh, to be here tonight, particularly uh, in view of the fact that there is uh, a board of education meeting tonight. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, uh, let's. Uh, try to use this time to uh, get the community to know as much as possible about you and your candidacy, all right? Yes. Um, so I grew up in Atlantic City. I've been a resident of Atlantic City for the past 39 years. I've worked uh, as an EMT for the last 20 years. I just recently retired from that field of work back in 2022. Um, when I got out of that field, I was trying to find a way to Continue to give back to the community, so I got into the funeral business, which I know is a little weird. Went from saving people to kind of pushing them <laughs> into the other side. But um, I've learned a lot moving into that field of work. I get to interact more with families. I get to help people in need. Um, and it, it's just a very rewarding career, especially coming from a career that was running around night and day, lights and sirens, running red lights getting yelled at, getting spit on, um, and doing this now in this field of work is, is very interesting. It gives me a chance to give back to the community, and it also gives me a chance to help families in need. Um, I don't have any children. This is my first time running for school board, um, so it's an exciting experience so far, and hopefully I get elected so that I can experience that more. All right. Um... Why, why are you running for the school board? Is there a particular issue that drives you, or what, why, why are you running? So I'm running for school board. I, I, I avoided running for school board. Many years, people approached me to run for school board. They, they said that that's a great starting point. You should run for school board. Um, however, my uncle worked for the schools for 25 years. Um, he recently passed away this past year. He worked at this school as a teacher's aide for a number of years. And uh, I figure a way of continuing his legacy for what he did here in Atlantic City was to finally accept the challenge and run for school board. So I decided that I want to keep his memory alive and I want to do the same things that he did to help impact the youth here in Atlantic City. I see. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned your experiences and the skills that you've developed along the way. How your experiences and skills, how have they prepared you to serve on the school board? The biggest experience is obviously listening to people's concerns and then coming up with a solution. And I think the, the way to solve the problems within our school district is to have parents more involved with their child's education, giving parents more of a voice as to what their children are learning and what our schools are teaching. We definitely need to work on making sure that our, our parents are, are involved in what's going on so that we can have a success, uh, successful education platform here in Atlantic City that helps our youth prepare for high school and college and for the future. 
What do you see as the primary work of, of this Board of Education? The primary work is to set forth a foundation that our teachers and educators here in Atlantic City work on to promote a, a strong education for our youth. Um, and if we're not providing the proper materials to those teachers, then our children aren't learning what they need to learn to better themselves to be ready for the future. Okay. Um, could you support a Board of Education decision that you did not vote in favor of? And tell us why or why not. I could support anything that benefits our youth and that will, will strengthen the purpose of our school board. Um, unfortunately, right now with our school board, we have a lot of members who are conflicted and can't vote on a lot of items. So having a couple members on the school board who aren't conflicted and don't have those conflicts that will affect their decisions on things will help promote a better education for our youth. Okay. But if, if it was something that you did not agree with, and the board passed it anyway, I mean, how, how do you handle that? I, I would handle it like anything else. I, I would hear it through, see, see why I don't agree with it, and maybe ask for it to be placed on the next board agenda so that I can get a better understanding of why the other board members are, are pushing for that. Um, Every day we learn something new, and obviously we have to have an open mind when it comes to an elected office to understand that someone is putting something in front of us for a reason. Maybe there's input that we don't know, so it's just a matter of being open-minded about everything. Okay. This next question has to do with transparency. Uh, how can the board be more accessible to the community or to specific community groups? And how would you promote that? I think the easiest way to answer that question is to be more involved with the schools. Be in the schools. Go visit the schools. Um, see who you're representing. Be in, have small meetings with parents. Let the parents speak with you and understand, you know, if there's concerns that parents have or there's concerns that the students have, then all the board members should be open to speaking to the parents or speaking to the children to understand what the concerns are with the community. So we have to build a bridge between the Board of Education and the community and that goes back to that having the parents involved in the education because then they then get to voice their concerns on what's going on in the schools. Um, with respect to the the educational programs within the schools themselves. What issues do you believe uh, the district, the, the school board, needs to address in its uh, academic programs and offerings? What, what changes would you recommend as to what's going on now? Well, speaking with some of the residents, um, a big concern is our test scores. Um, and specifically in math and reading um, and, and the lack of arts programs that our youth are involved in in the schools. There's also been a concern for um, recreation that was cut out during COVID. And going back to what one of the other presenters said, uh, the COVID four years ago is still being used as an, as an excuse for programs that were removed during that period and not returned to our schools. So, with respect, you mentioned arts, which is often cut, uh, among the first to, to be cut. Uh, are you familiar with the Board of Education budget? Yes. How would you approach uh, making cuts if you would support keeping arts in the school? I mean, you look at the budget and there's four and a half million dollars listed as other expenditures in the budget for the Board of Education. So that's the first area I would look at to see where that money's going. But we also have to look at the money that's being spent on computerized learning that was used during COVID that we spent to get the computer-aided systems that are not being used right now. Maybe there's a way that we can 
put those away and not spend the money on those licenses for the online um, learning because we don't need them right now. We have kids in, in school. So those are areas that I would look in specifically, the online learning licenses that we're spending over $100,000 for and then that $4.4 .4 million in other expenses. I see. Um, what, what do you think the role is of schools teaching children topics such as sex, education, uh, cyber safety, AIDS, wellness, bullying, and civic responsibility? You can address any issues that are of particular interest to you. I think bullying is a number one that has to be taught. Um, we have to start that at a young age. I think our children are misguided on what constitutes bullying and not bullying. Uh, as far as the sexual oriented um, lessons that we see going on in other states that they're trying to incorporate into the lessons, I think those are reserved for high school level students and not our youth below seventh or eighth grade. Um, we don't need to be poisoning our youth with that stuff at a young age, especially <coughs> when they're not in that developmental stage of what they're being taught. So definitely bullying would be the number one thing that I would make sure is taught in school, starting from kindergarten all the way through high school, and then any other subject that teaches economics or fundamental classes that will get people ready for the future. Well, I've been notified that we have less than a minute now. So, uh, are there any other topics that you would like the community to know uh, about your qualifications for the Board of Education that I didn't ask you? you want to so, the only other thing that I will put out there is I'm very strong and support ensuring safety for our students. I want to develop a comprehensive plan for all of our schools to make sure that our schools are proactive when it comes to anything that can occur in our schools, whether it's school shootings that we see going on. We've seen an increase in the last couple of weeks with people sharing data online that says, oh, here's a list of schools that are going to be affected. We have schools being closed because of it. So we need to make sure that we're training all of our schools and all of our students to be better prepared in the event that something does happen in one of our schools and then making sure that all of our teachers and staff are also trained in that field. Mama, how time flies when you're having fun. Thank you for being here.